All right, life science today, I'm going to cover or finish section 9.3 seed plants. So we started this section talking about what seed plants are. Uh, basically, they are plants that produce seeds and there are two types of seed plants, angiosperms and gymnosperms, and we're gonna dive into uh, more in detail about each of those types. But we also talked about um, leaves and stems and roots and how the vascular tissue is made up of two types of tissue, xylem and phloem. Phloem carries food, AKA sugar, xylem uh, carries water. Uh, we talked about the roots and the, the jobs of roots to help anchor it, to help absorb nutrients from the soil. We talked about how stems connect leaves to the roots. And then we finally talked about the leaf anatomy um, with you know, the palisade mesophyll and the spongy mesophyll and the, just all the different types of cells that make up a leaf. You know, a leaf is, is an organ, uh, but its main job for leaves, I should, I should say, is for photosynthesis. Okay, so this video lecture, which will be short, uh, is just going to look at gemnosperms and angiosperms and then um, how do we differentiate between monocots and dicots and annuals, perennials, and um, biannuals. So here we go. Gymnosperms. So gymnosperms are one type of seed plants, and these are seeds that um, are produced in a cone. In fact, the word gymnosperm actually means naked seed because it's not enclosed by a fruit. There are four types of gymnosperms. Um, the cycads, which are found in tropical regions, okay, um, which is a really bad picture, but they almost look palm-like. The ginkgos, Okay, there's only one species left. Uh, they produce these berries, and when these berries um, fall, um, they actually smell disgusting. They actually smell like vomit. How would I know? Um, Gustavus Adolphus had one on the campus, and um, during certain parts of the year, you just you just didn't walk that pathway. Genetophytes, okay? Um, these guys right here are genetophytes. They are unusual and diverse. Um, there's only a few species found in Africa. So very small numbers of genetophytes out there. Um, and then finally, conifers. And these are probably the group that you are more familiar with, but you think the Christmas tree, right? Pines, spruces, firs, okay? All of those are examples of conifers. Now we use conif or gemnosperms in a variety of different ways. The big one is building materials, okay? Which the price, if you had not known, has skyrocketed. Um, we use gymnosperms in the processing of paper, how, do we, you know, how we make paper. Um, we use uh, genetophytes and some cycads for medicinal purposes, making of phar pharmaceutical drugs. In fact, uh, ephedra, uh, a medicine found in Sudafed, um, is a genetophyte, if I'm not mistaken. And then finally, ornamental plants, um, landscaping, um, decor, all of that kind of fits under there. So lots of uses for us. Um, with gymnosperms. Now angiosperms are flowering plants. They produce flowers. And another characteristic of angiosperms is that their seeds are made inside of a fruit. Okay, so like apples, plums, peaches, um, beans, sunflower, corn. All angiosperms have flowers. Um, and a lot of times those seeds are enclosed in a fruit. Now, angiosperms are the youngest, okay? The most abundant, 260,000 species. I'm sure that number is up since this edition of the book has come out. And they grow in a wide variety of habitats. So the, the plants that you probably see in everyday life are either a gymnosperm or an angiosperm. Okay, moving on to what does it mean by annual, biannual, and perennial? So annuals are plants that only live one season. Okay, so maybe you're like flower you're shopping in a greenhouse. You know, your mom's like, oh, let's go pick up some flowers. You know, it's spring slash summer. Um, so you're, you're going through picking out flowers, and you see those little um, paper. Gosh, what's the word? Markers in the potting plants it gives you the bot background information, what type of species it is. Is it a sun plant, a shade plant? Is it an annual, biannual, perennial? So you may see these, these terms. An annual just means that um, it will grow, flower, and produce seed in just one growing season. So it's going to die at the end of that year. Biannuals, that prefix bi means two. 
where in that first year it's going to grow roots, stems, leaves, and then that second year it will produce the flowers and the seeds, and then it will die after two growing seasons. So a great example of biennials are actually carrots. Carrots will grow roots and stems and leaves, and then the second year they produce flowers and seeds, uh, and then it dies after that. Perennials are species that can live for more than two growing seasons, sometimes decades, uh, sometimes, you know, I mean, just a few years, but trees and shrubs kind of fit underneath that perennial. They come back. There's actually a lot of like um, um, flowers that you plant in the front of your house, like, like tulips or, um, oh gosh, I'm just blanking on plant species right now, um, but they do come back. Um, so you know, tulips, they'll come out, uh, they'll do their thing, and then it will, you know, it doesn't die, just, you know, it's the end of its life cycle, uh, but it will reemerge, basically. So those are perennials. They come back year after year after year. Uh, trees and shrubs, they kind of just exist throughout, right? Uh, you don't see like a, well, I mean, I guess if you think of a sugar maple, you know, it does drop its leaves, um, and then it grows new leaves, so... So here's a diagram showing the plant life cycles, the annual, where you have germination, growth, flowering, producing the seeds, and then death. Uh, perennials, germination, growth, flower, seeds, dormancy, that's the word. It doesn't die, it just goes dormant. Um, and it can do this multiple flowering cycles, okay? Biennial, it's a two season plant. So you have germination, growth, dormancy, and then the next season, growth, flower and seeds, death. Okay. The last thing I want to talk about is distinguishing between monocots and dicots. And this kind of falls underneath the um, angiosperm as well. So um, plant life cycles are, you know, seed plants, okay? Um, monocots, dicots also falls underneath seed plants. But there is a difference between, you know, seed plants. And we, yes, we have angiosperms, we have gymnosperms, but we can also classify them as monocot or dicots. And how we determine whether or not it's monocot and dicot is when it germinates, when it emerges from the seed. How many leaves come out of that seed? Okay, so here we have this baby leaf called a cotyledon. Um, and if it's just one, then we call it a monocot. And when it's two baby leaves, um, then it is um, a dicot, die for two. So, you know, when you cruise the dirt roads of Traverse County and you start to see the crop emerge from the, um, the ground, you can just look at those leaves and count the number of leaves that you see. If it's just one, kind of looks like grass, then it's, it's corn. Corn is a monocot. If you see two, you can be like, oh, soybeans are planted there, okay? Other ways that you can tell the difference between monocot and dicots is by looking at their leaves. The leaves will be narrow and parallel, think grass. Um, with dicots, it will be branched. Flowers, multiples of three. For dicots, multiples of four or five. So um, this obviously runs in the problem. Like if you come across something that's like 12 or 36, you know, is it a monocot or dicot? So flowers, the count and the number of petals uh, is not the best way to do that. Stems, if you were to cut the stem and kind of take a look at it from the inside, uh, the vascular tissue is scattered throughout the stem, whereas in dicots, it's arranged in a nice little ring. And I'll show you a diagram on the next slide. And then I already discussed the baby leaves coming out of the seeds. So one baby leaf, monocot, two baby leaves, dicots. And we call those baby leaves uh, cotyledons. I hate saying that word, so I'm just gonna say baby leaves. So here's a diagram, this is my final slide. Um, where we have the seed and it's one baby leaf, and here there's two baby leaves. Uh, the roots for monocots kind of scattered. Um, oh, what the heck? That's oh, sorry. This is what I'm looking at. Stems scattered throughout the vascular bundles. Scattered throughout here, we get this nice little ring formation. The leaf parallel in monocots and dicots. It's branched. Uh, flowers multiples of three. And then for the dicots, it's four or five. So you, you may notice this term, you dicots. Uh, it's also, it also means dicots. All right, so that does it for um, 9.3. Uh, you're going to get a, a worksheet slash packet on it, reviewing what we just covered. Um, tomorrow is a work day to finish your review guide. We're looking at the review guide being due Wednesday 
and looking at a chapter nine test Thursday.